So our last special journal we need to talk about is the cash payments journal on page 439 of your textbook. We're going to talk about recording payments including refunds and cash payments journal and we're going to balance and post the cash payments journal just like we did the other three special journals. The basic accounting principle is that all payments except very small ones should be made by check. Each check should be authorized. Documents such as receiving reports and approved invoices should be available to support the issuing of the check. In many companies, a check request form is completed before a check is issued. This form is called the check requisition. The check requisition is accompanied by all of the documents related to the transaction because the person with the responsibility to authorize the issuing of a check may wish to trace the entire history of the transaction. Many firms use a voucher form of a check shown on the next page. The check is prepared with three copies. Copy one is the check sent to the creditor. Copy two is used by the accounting department as the source document for the journal entry. And copy three is filed with the invoice. Notice that the check in the next page requires two signatures. Many firms require two people to sign all checks so that there is some control over the cash. Okay, so it would look like this with different copies behind it. Because of the large number of payments made, many companies record their checks in a cash payments journal. Special columns are provided for accounts that are often used. In the cash payments journal, special columns are headed cash credit, accounts payable debit, HST refundable debit, purchases debit, and purchases discounts credit. The other account debit column is provided for those accounts that do not fit into these special columns. Source documents for various transactions that involve cash payments are shown and recorded here as well. So we're going to go through these, how they came up with these three that are listed here. Check issued for account payment less a purchase discount. On November 4th, Pan Canadian Sports Equipment received purchase invoice for $500 worth of basketballs plus $65 HST. Uh, the terms of the sale are 2% if discount if paid in 15 days, net 30. The invoice was re checked for accuracy and since the order was received in good condition, the invoice was passed for payment. The invoice was recorded in Pan Canadian sports books that look like this. So there was a purchase for 500, accounts payable 565 and HST refundable 465. The invoice was placed in the date file in a folder dated November 19th. The check for 553 dated November 19th was prepared. Um, from the check copy, entries were made in the following T accounts. So the cash that's coming out is 553 because there was a discount of it being paid early. And this 565 needs to be uh, zeroed out because you no longer owe anything to that company. So if we go back here, we should see here we have our Sporting Goods Limited. We have a cash credit of 553.70. Our accounts payable is paid off, and we need to show that we had a discount of 11.30. Okay. So in general journal form, the entry shown would look like this. So this is when it was purchased here. And because it's being paid, this is what's going into the cash payment journal. A bank debit memo indicates a decrease in a bank account. So this, in this case, there is a uh, debit coming out of 150. And those can be things like service charges, bank interest, things like that. So you're going to use the bank interest expense account. And if we go back, sorry, go back to here you'll see on the 20th there was a bank interest expense. Our cash had to come out of 150 and we have to use the other account because we are using our bank interest expense and we don't have a column for that. Uh, check issued for refund on cash sale with HST. On November 20th, Sylvia's Post purchased a pair of tennis shoes for $65 and a racket for 95. She paid a total of 180.80 so when the things were sold, it looked like this. We had cash, 8,180,80, sales, 160, and HST payable, 2080. However, Sylvia was unhappy with the quality of the racket and returned it. She received a check, and it was a refund of 107.35. And what, how they found that is they took, it had HST on there, would be 12.35 added on to the 
So what's happening in this one is we have to put that $95 into the sales return. The cash that's coming out is $107.35 and we need to show that there was that purchase discount of $12.35 as well. So if we go back, we can see that how that's recorded here. We have Sylvia Post's name. The credit coming out of our account is $107.35. And we need to show that we had the sales return was 95 and the HST payable was 1235. Okay, the textbook also gives you a few more examples here. I'm not going to go through all of them because it would take quite a while, but if you're having trouble in any of your assignments, you should go back and have a look to see if you can see one that is similar to here. So you've got these transactions listed here and on the next page, you've got them all put into your cash payments journal like this. So you can go back and refer to those and remember about making sure your debits equal your credits, the totals being posted to those accounts as well, single underline to show adding, double underline to show that everything else is good. Okay, so I hope that helps you guys. That's our last video of this module.